seeing that it is six o'clock, we'll get started. This is the April 6th, 2022 Coralville Planning and Zoning Meeting, and it is now called to order. Can I get a roll call, please? Fessler? Here. Holderness? Here. Casserly? Here. Aarons? Here. Wenman? Here. Friedhoff? Here. Taylor? Here. Okay. Do we have any corrections to the agenda? Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. <coughs> moved Second. by Fessler. Seconded by Casserly. We will now vote on approving the agenda. All those who approve say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried, seven to zero. Are there any corrections to the notes from our last meeting? This would be uh, the March 2nd, 2022 meeting minutes. Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the March 2nd, 2022 meeting? So move. Second. Moved by Casserly, seconded by Aarons. We will now vote on approving the minutes from the March 2nd, 2022 meeting. All those approved, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried seven to zero. All right, we are now moving on to agenda item number five. We have a public hearing requested by Coralville West LLC to recommend approval of final plant plat for Coral Six Square, part one. I will now open the public hearing on this item. Seeing no one moving forward, I will now close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to consider recommending approval of the final plat? So moved. Second. Moved by Aarons, seconded by Holderness. Any discussion on this one? I would just note that uh, this plat will record the right of way in alignment for future Coral Six Square uh, Drive, which is lot A on the plat. Mm -hmm. uh, the drive will provide needed uh, secondary access for the expansion of Western Hills Mobile Home Park. And the plat also, also describes two outlots to the east and west. There are, uh, those, are, those are identified for future development. And uh, city staff has reviewed the, the plat and finds that it conforms with the uh, requirements for preparation filing outlined in city code. That's all I have. Dave, does that new street only give access to the two outlots? It doesn't actually access the existing trailer court, does it? Uh, this will actually go up to the boundary of the trailer park. So yes, it will it will connect to the trailer park and I would imagine east-west streets uh, coming off of Coral 6 or coming off this drive uh, once outlots A and B develop. Is that intended to be the future expansion, those outlots? Uh, no, I'm sorry. The, the future expansion is actually in the northwest part of the Western Hills Mobile Home Park. Uh, the reason that this is needed is once you exceed a certain number of housing units, uh, you need a uh, you need two ways in and, and out of a subdivision. Uh, so during their last expan expansion, we realized that uh, throughout previous years we've exceeded that number, and uh, it required this drive be installed. So, so since you know, there were no public improvements, a preliminary plat was not required. But they were aware that, as Ron mentioned, that when that has to connect to the existing drive, and they're, they're going to have to move some trailers because there is no drive. Uh, yes, I think that they're going to plan on losing at least one trailer. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? No. Okay. We will now vote on the approval of the final plat. Could I have a roll call, please? Yeah. Friedhoff? Aye. Fessler? Aye. Holderness? Aye. Casserly? Aye. Aarons? Aye. Wenman? Aye. Taylor? Aye. Motion carried seven to zero. Moving on to agenda, agenda item number six. We have a public hearing requested by Iowa Corridor Company to recommend rezoning from the commercial planned unit development one district, CPUD one to the Commercial Planned Unit Development 2 District, CPUD 2, and approve a PUDB site plan for Lot 1, Red Hawk, Subdivision Part 3. 
I will now open the public hearing on this item. Good evening, John Warner with the Mass Consultants representing the applicant. Uh, it's an application as presented on the, on the screen there for a Duncan drive through restaurant. Uh, we worked with staff to try to accommodate some additional to make sure that we were doing a good job of providing screening along Coral Ridge Avenue and then also along the trail that accesses that stretches from Coral Ridge Avenue back to the Red Hawk development to to uh, do a little bit of extra landscaping on the south side of the property there <coughs> uh, provided uh, it has two drive-through loanings it has two pickup windows uh, there's some spots for mobile order parking as well and then we provided Stormwater detent or stormwater quality, excuse me, within the center portion of the property, and then in the northwest corner and the west portion of the property. I'm available for any questions if you have any. So I noticed that we're looking at having um, reduced parking spaces potentially in the parking lot. Correct. Uh, that's something that uh, staff worked with. MMS on and uh, staff is agreeable to in this particular application. Um, I know I've mentioned before that PUDs are intended to allow certain degrees of flexibility with strict adherence to some design standards. Parking can of course be one of those but in return the city expects elevated site or building design with a particular project. In this case we were able to get, um, we removed some of the parallel um, stalls on the south border of this property that staff and I believe MMS also concurred that weren't really gonna be heavily used since they would also be adjacent to the drive aisles. And we greatly enhanced a lot of the landscaping and screening on there. So that was the trade off in that. I was just curious, do you know how many um, seating, how much seating will be there? Uh, this is ample for, it's actually above what they typically require see on a day to day basis at most of their other similar locations for seating for uh, parking capacity based on the employees okay. and, the, and, and the typical seating count. There okay. aren't very many, as Dave has there, there's not yeah. a lot of seating. Most of it is walk up traffic and drive okay. through traffic. Okay. That was another consideration we made in the decision is this is the floor plan for the proposed Duncan and you can see that there's a lot of sp sink space, prep space, um, restroom space dedicated to this, but there's not a, a lot of floor space in terms of dining uh, yeah. with this, which is fairly typical of uh, Dunkin' Donut sites. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. As long Dave. as they have a lot of drive-through space. <laughs> Dave, do you have a view that shows where enough. this building would be like in relation to where the Starbucks is so I can help orient myself? Sure. Um, and if you'd like while you're doing that, I can close the public hearing. Um, and do I have a motion to consider recommending rezoning to the CPUD2 district? So moved. Moved by Wenman. Seconded. Seconded by Aarons. And we can lead into discussion. So, uh, Ron, uh, 3290 here. Yes. This is the Starbucks site. Yes. Uh, this is where the Heartland Dental uh, building uh, will be located. You've probably seen some temporary signage for that. And this is where the Dunkin' Donuts is located at 3240. To the west of that is the large multifamily Red Hawker 965 Flats development that's been going on. David, could you give me uh, just a quick rundown of the difference between these two zonings, the PDU-1, CPDU-1 and the CPDU-2? Right. What the value is they're getting from the, the transition? So really a, a CPUD-1 or any sort of a PUD-1 zoning district is intended to be applied for for large scale developments or master plans that are intended to occur over a long period of time. Uh, once a specific, uh, more specific plans are identified in terms of building details and landscaping and site design, that's when we would move from the master planning stage to an actual development ready plan uh, that can be approved. So it's just much more detailed. Any other questions? Okay. We will now vote on the approval of rezoning to the CPUD2 district. Could I have a roll call? Holderness. Aye. Casserly. Aye. Aarons. Aye. Wenman. Aye. Friedhoff. Aye. Fessler. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Motion carried seven to zero.
Do I have a motion to consider recommending approval of the PUDB site plan? So moved. Moved by Holderness. Second. Seconded by Friedhoff. Any more discussion on this one? Uh, I believe the uh, uh, commission has been forwarded uh, copies of the um, elevations. If not, I can <coughs> just pull those up uh, quick. Just to give you an idea. Um, the actual material samples are on the table in front of you. Uh, the brick will be predominantly uh, masonry materials as well as an each panel. Uh, these, these materials are not foreign to the development that we're seeing in the West Land Use Area. All the materials proposed on this project align with the, with the design and, and site requirements in the West Land Use Area Master Plan. Anything else? All right. We will now vote on the approval of the PUDB site plan. Roll call, please. Aarons? Aye. Wenman? Aye. Friedhoff? Aye. Fessler? Aye. Holderness? Aye. Casserly? Aye. Taylor? Aye. Motion carried 7 to 0. We will now move on to agenda item number 7. We have a public hearing request by 13th Street Lots, LLC, to recommend approval to amend the Coralville Community Land Plan land use map from open space to low density residential. I will now open the public hearing on this item. And I will ask as people move forward to the podium to please state your name and your address. My name is Bruce Zobeck. I live at 2032 13th Street. What I'm here for is to find out a little bit more about what is the purpose of this development and where, how they're going to gain access. This appears to be a landlocked piece of property. How are they going to gain access to it? There's no information here that indicates any of that. So I'm looking for that information. Where do I have to go to get it? Do I have to go to the people that are? No, actually, you're, you're at the right place. That's the purpose of this hearing, and those are all things that we will, we will discuss and, and help, you, and help answer for you. So you're, at, you're exactly the right place. Okay, so can we, uh, will you discuss that, and then I did have an opportunity to respond? We sure will. Okay, thank you. I am Deborah Gregory Michener, and I own that property up there. So, a little bit of history on it is that it was it's zoned residential R2, I believe, but for whatever reason, the land use map shows it as open space, which I believe to be a mistake. That was a mistake that was made when they when they. Uh, did that land use map in what 2014 so the re the residential zoning and the land use map are contradictory because as an owner of that property I can't do anything with it as open space I guess if Corville wants to buy it and make it open space that's up to them but um, I can't do anything with it so that was what David told us is that it was a mistake made and it needs to be changed. Um, and as far as his question, as far as access, the whole property is, there's two lots on 13th Street um, and there's an easement between, the, between those two lots that gives access to that three acres back behind between that and the interstate. Um, there is question as to whether we can use that easement but that's between me and mid-american um, because there is a huge gas line easement that goes through that property but that's to be discussed later from what I understand um, but the property as a whole I do own the properties that do access that land so if you have any other questions I would be happy to try to answer them <laughs> and Chairperson Taylor, I'd also be happy to offer my staff report 
um, if that would help provide some background and context for um, the neighbors who are here this evening. Okay. Um, bear with me, there's quite a bit, but there's a lot of information and history to this, so I, I'll go through all of it. But uh, what, uh, what the applicant is asking is not to rezone the property. The applicant is requesting to amend the land use map for the property. So uh, a, a community plan is the foundation for a city's decision making. This board oftentimes references the land use plan map as well as the community plan in decision making for rezoning requests. Um, it represents a city's vision for the future, describes how a community will look and function, and the core of the community plan is the result of um, a multifaceted comprehensive process that included data collection, uh, public input, um, as well as uh, help from professional consultants. And the plan identifies existing conditions with the city, uh, which includes land use, development, zoning, transportation, economy, the environment, and, and more. Uh, again, it's a very comprehensive document. So this data, in combination with input with Coralville residents and businesses, identifies issues and opportunities in our community, which forms the basis for the plan's goals and recommendations. So a land use map is part of a community's comprehensive plan, and that's really what we're discussing uh, this evening is the land use map part of a land use plan. This is the illustration of the community's vision for the future. It reflects existing and desired conditions and provides guidance on densities, character, and locations of land uses in the community. The land use map classifications are not the same as zoning classifications. Zoning defines in much greater specificity allowed uses and how a property can develop. So for example, the Coralville low density residential land use classification allows for residential development that is zero to six dwelling units per acre. Uh, the land use map has established a general allowed use and density for that property. If that property were zoned R2 to family residential district, the zoning district would further specify, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, would further specify uh, that that would need to be duplexes and also specify specific bulk regulations or setbacks, how far a building needs to be from a side property line, a rear property line, a front property line. Mm -hmm. So there is a difference between a land use plan and map and zoning. Uh, tonight, the only thing being considered is a change in the land use map. So prior to adoption of the 2014 Coralville uh, Community Plan, uh, the property was designated as low density residential. Uh, this was the case since the 1992 land use map. So during the 2014 community planning process, the property was designated open space. Open space is undeveloped areas typically associated with a public use or enjoyment. Uh, these can be small isolated areas or these can also be large continuous areas. So in working with um, Ms. Michener, uh, we did research and we could not identify any specific input or analysis which resulted in this change. The applicant, as she stated, believes that this was done in error. Uh, that change could also be the result of a large mid-American uh, energy pipeline easement that uh, goes through the property. This property is approximately 3.6 acres. Uh, the pipeline easement um, with, in which development cannot happen uh, is actually 1.5 acres, so it is it is a fairly sizable chunk. That being said, it doesn't necessarily render a property as being undevelopable. Um, the applicant uh, has recently provided some concepts to the city that um, uh, she believes can illustrate that 13th Street, um, or that this can be developed and access would come off 13th Street. Uh, the applicant does own uh, 2,000. These are the properties under consideration tonight. And the property does, or the property owner also owns 2001 and 1919, um, 13th Street, uh, in which access uh, would be, in where the access would come from and also where utilities would be connected from. So there's uh, far too many unknown variables for, for, for us to make a determination today exactly um, how and, and how this property could or, or would be developed. Uh, however, that question is really inconsequential to the request before the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission's task is to determine whether low-density residential is appropriate at this location. 
Will low density residential development negatively impact the character of the area or neighboring streets? So uh, we, we looked at the general character of the area and uh, all property in the immediate vicinity is currently classified as low density residential and medium density residential on the uh, current 2014 community plan map. Low density residential is defined, defined as primarily single family detached homes on subdivided lots that have a density between zero and six dwelling units per acre. Low density residential can also include townhomes or duplexes. Development in the area consists of single family detached as well as zero lot attached homes. Uh, you can see that um, both uh, east and west of this property. Uh, medium density residential allows for horizontally stacked um, townhomes, uh, but not vertically stacked um, like apartment buildings. Uh, and medium density is typically six to 16 dwelling units per acre. So for context, the subject immediately west of the property, which is Heritage Estates Part 4, is, uh, this is this area here, is 23.61 acres and designated as medium density residential. That contains approximately 120 units. The average density is approximately five dwelling units per acre, where that would also qualify as a low density residential land use. The subdivision Im immediately south of the subject property, which is AMK Edition 2, is 23.76 acres and designated low density residential. It has a total of 91 units and the average density is a little under four dwelling units per acre uh, for that area. So the applicant is requesting the commission review and recommend city, uh, or I'm sorry, recommend the Planning and Zoning Commission um, or ask that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend uh, changing the land use uh, uh, plan map back to uh, low density residential from open space. And that pipeline easement, I'm not sure if you can generally see, but that pipeline easement generally follows this area here. Can you put an aerial map on there? isn't going to be perfect. It'll, it'll just give everybody in the room a general idea on where that easement um, happens to be located. Dave, it might also be helpful if you could explain to the neighbors what any f future steps would have to occur before any building could take place there? Sure, so um, the pipeline easement is largely in, in this area here. Um, it also comes across parts of 2000, I'm sorry, it comes across parts of 2001, as well as a portion of 1919 13th Street. Um, however, what makes this property potentially developable is the fact that a drive could be um, located on the east side of 1919 and this, this, this is not correct, this should be further west, uh, and open up p some potential low density resi de residential development back here. So if the property owner wanted to currently, or wanted to do that, the next step in this process would be to rezone the property. If this property were to be requested to be rezoned, a very similar process would happen. Uh, we would have another public hearing and all neighbors in the area would be given uh, notification of that request to rezone this property and all the neighbors would also have within 200 feet would have an opportunity to uh, comment on, on that application. Uh, it appears that, uh, it appears to me that right now the land is of little use to anyone. Is that, would that be fair to say? Except I suppose somebody has to take care of it. Um, that would probably be a better question to be answered by the applicants. I'm Lynn Snyder. I actually own and managed that property for my family for many years. Um, we were always under the impression that it was buildable. We did also give plans to the city of Coralville to put four plexes up there at one time, back whenever. Um, never, and I, I was on the 2014 Land Use Plan Committee, I did not know that it had been changed to open space. We've had it listed for sale. 
There's no way we thought that that was open space. So historically, we always thought it was buildable. The city of Coralville, when Jim Kessler was here, led us to believe that yes, we could build on it. We were like maybe four, you know, two fourplexes or something up there. So it's always been considered buildable. My sister inherited the land and she owns it now. And then now we know it's, you know, to me, it was a mistake. And it's a mistake that needs to be corrected. Got any questions? Sorry. <laughs> Can you point out the, so the gas line easement falls between the red line and the blue line? Uh, that's, yeah, yeah, this that's is off. off. That's, that's, that's all right. That it, the, let me see if I can find the, do you want me to look up the MMS exhibit? The easement does not have. I think that's just going to bring up a whole lot of issues when you start showing them that. I think it's. Unless you want to start discussing the easement. There is <laughs> enough land up there to build on. The easement is only part of it. And you can get across it. I walked across that property yesterday, or today, or yesterday afternoon. When you walk on, I believe it would be 2000, what's the one on the left, the lot on the left? 2001. 2001. When you walk up there and cross basically where the back of that property would be, you see a gas marker to the right. To the right. So when you're walking up, and I'm not walking on the the neighbor's property, and I don't know where the neighbor's property is, where the trees are there. But when you're walking up in the middle of that next lot, the uh, gas marker is to the right. It's like right in the middle of the property. Okay, both of those lots have open envelopes on them. Can we come to the speaker yeah, so I, we I make think, sure we get everything? I think the, what, what the, the takeaway from a lot of this is um, there is a, there is a large uh, Mid-American Gas Pipeline Utility Easement. It's one and a half acres uh, that takes up a good portion of this lot. Um, however, uh, and these these are not exact. Um, the the blue line should be moved left a little bit that that I drew there. But um, there is an opportunity for a drive uh, off of off the east side of 1919 13th Street, where it could potentially access development in the rear back here outside of the pipeline and easement area. Okay. That's, that's the takeaway. That's the so there line. is the potential, but at this point without knowing exact plans, exact um, layouts, soil, st stormwater management, all the variables we look at when reviewing a development, I'm just not in a position to say something is absolutely developable or not. But I would say that it has been demonstrated there is a potential. All right. Is there anything further before I close the public hearing? And I, I will tell you, the two lots in the front, the two lots on 13th Street, if you notice, they're much larger than the other lots. They were designed that way so that there was an easement between them. We always had an easement between them to go to the back lot, to the three acres in the back. There has been now some issues. We always had, an, we thought we had an agreement with, at that time, Iowa, Illinois to be able to go across there. You can, you can put a parking lot on a um, gas pipeline. You just can't build on it. So you could put a parking lot on the west side and build on the east side. And we had that easement, and now with my sister has right now had some problems with Mid-American. They're not agreeing that that is, but there is an easement in between in the middle of those two lots. Okay. Um, no, but would you mind if I if we just pass this around and then people in the audience could also view this document? Yeah, this would fine. this would probably best illustrate that. Okay, well that one doesn't show this. Okay, there's so building the, envelopes on both of those lots. The dash line, the dash line is the pipeline easement, and then these are the two lots. So we would have to sort that out at a potential site plan review. Oh, correct. Yes, all of all of these things. If 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 a developer or a home builder wished to build a, a single family home or a town home, there would be a complete site plan review process. And prior to that, like I mentioned earlier, there would also be 
unless it were single family, detached, there would also be a rezoning request, in which case neighbors would be made aware of that. So I can pull up the zoning I don't um, on this, and you can take a look at that. Can you zoom out a, a little bit too? I'd like to see the surrounding area. So does that gas line easement run through Corville? It goes right west of this building. It goes through Morrison Park. Okay. Goes through Northridge Park. So the property uh, to the the property is currently zoned R2. You could do duplexes on R2. Other than that, we would anticipate a rezoning application. And the property to the south is zoned R4, which is a multifamily residential district, which is odd, but that R4 zoning has been in place for a long time. And then what is the public easement to the north between the interstate right away and the uh, this is actually a, a green belt. The city owns this. So the, how far does that tie all the way back then, the public uh, green belt? Uh, all the way to Coral Ridge. He side of Coral Ridge Mall and okay. this trail system right here. <clears throat> so that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other comments before I close the public hearing? Can you, can you sure. Certainly. And again, I would just know, you know, what the what the commission is considering tonight is is low density to residential going to have a negative impact on the character of the area. Um, how this is developed, if if this can be developed, are all questions that would be addressed by <coughs> designers, city staff, um, and also Mid American Energy down the road. Uh, Apparently, like you said, this was uh, basically is open space now, and that was designated in 2014. I don't think that was a mistake back in 2014. When you look at the natural gas pipelines located on that property, according to that map, I, I don't think that was a mistake. I think that was intended because of the purposes of those natural gas pipelines splitting that property up into something that would be extremely difficult to build on and probably dangerous. We were kind of surrounded by natural gas pipelines on 13th Street, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd hate to see a, a big accident because of carelessness uh, building too close to natural gas pipelines. Our backyard, which I don't know if it's treated as a green space, I think there's been some real problems with, uh, there's a water diversion in the back there, a retainage pond behind 13th Street to the south, somehow 
in the past, we've been, when it wasn't maintained, we as landowners were told we had to maintain it. It's not our property. And that's where that natural gas pipeline actually ends up, crossing 13th Street and running behind us there. There's, I guess there's some real issues done on natural gas pipelines. They're not marked very well in many cases, and they're not marked very well on this property, but there is a marker up there in the middle of that property, and I say it splits that property in half. Anyway, I think this should be tabled till we have more, uh, uh, more information. I think that the decision was right in 2014 to consider this as a open space. I don't think that was a mistake. And I think to change it now would be a, a big mistake without at least more investigation as, as to the location of the natural gas pipelines on that property. Thanks. Okay. The natural gas pipelines have been very much determined. It's been surveyed. They know where they're at. I've talked to MidAmerican. There's three of them in there. One of them has been abandoned. Two of them, they're huge massive distribution lines. They go all the way through Coralville. They go all the way north across under the interstate. And there is at least two acres up there that is buildable. We can't build on top of those easements. And all of those houses are built next to that easement up there. So if you make, if you leave it as open space, you have taken away my rights as a property owner to do anything with that property because I can't I cannot maintain it and pay the taxes on it for an open space for who the public am I supposed to let the public run wild on there that doesn't even make sense so like I said all those houses are built up there next to that easement and there's houses all through Corville that are built next to those easements. And we can't build on that easement. Can you go back to the map that shows the street? properties where the natural gas pipeline is. And I don't know if they could. I don't know if it's someone that they could, but of course nobody has because the, the pipeline is on top of those properties. And of course this this area wasn't of course built on it. I don't know why, but that's where the natural gas pipeline is located. And I, I, I think that's a good location for it because it's at least a certain distance away from homes. There's a reason these properties haven't been built on and that's because of the natural gas pipeline. Okay, seeing no one else stepping forward, I will now close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to consider recommending approval to amend the Coralville Community Planned Land Use Map from open space to low density residential? So moved. So moved by Aaron's. Second. Seconded by Wenman. I was on the 2014 commission as well, and this piece of property, I do not, I went back to my notes and we did not, it never came up ever once, which is kind of interesting because we focused more down to the right, uh, kind of behind McDonald's down in that area and then down off of, and when this came through, I was like, wow, it did change. So I, I don't know why, I, I, I'm, same with Lynn Snyder, I don't know how that changed. I don't remember seeing it. And I also agree with the, the person talking. If you're going to change it to open space, somebody's going to have to buy it from me, right? You just took my property. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, clearly there's questions that still need to be answered. Absolutely. But that's not the purpose of yeah. what we're voting on tonight. Yeah, could you, could you read, David, uh, the statement uh, that you talked about earlier, the, the change of character of the area? <clears throat> you read a really good statement. Sure, really with the... Um, when, when making the decision on whether or not to approve a change in the land use map amendment, what you should be considering is 
will that change have a negative impact on the character or um, efficiencies or you know even traffic things like that in the general vicinity and um, as I noted with this particular application uh, everything surrounding this is also low density residential so in terms of densities low density residential again allows for zero to six dwelling units per acre subdivisions to the west as well as subdivisions to the south are all um, actually five eight five dwelling units per acre or less and in that low density category so I'm going to share my comments. Um, <clears throat> I do think this was probably an error. Um, I love open space. I really want to keep this as open space, but I don't think that's where we're at at this time. I think uh, the best solution for this is to move this to uh, low density residential and then have them bring a plat back. And I'll be honest, I would like to see some of that as an outlot with green space in it, but I also don't want to take your rights away as a landowner to profit from the pieces that has potential for development. You have two lots there, there's potentially another uh, room in the back for that, and I think that's your opportunity to work with your uh, designer to say, hey, we have a, a gas line easement through here. They're gonna have some stipulations you, you have to put in, and then it might not be a bad idea to have some, leave an outlot in there for stormwater runoff from these developments, things like that. And so. Uh, that's where I'm going to give, that's where I'm going to sit tonight is to move this forward and then be prepared to discuss, for, discuss it further when they come back. I have to agree with that. I, I question the use of open space here. I, those, a lot of those homes have been there for a long time. Um, I think it's a matter of whether you can get, you know, if you get the R2 rezoning, if you can really get the kind of development that's going to make it feasible you know economically feasible to build something in there with that pipeline so um, I'm I'm okay with changing the zoning pardon me sir I'm sorry the public hearing is closed is there any further discussion okay we will now vote on the approval to amend the Coralville Community Planned Land Use Map from open space to low density resident, residential. Roll call vote. Fessler? Aye. Holderness? Aye. Casserly? Aye. Ahrens? Aye. Wenman? Aye. Friedhoff? Aye. Taylor? Aye. Motion carried seven to zero. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. So moved by Friedhoff. Seconded. Seconded by Ahrens. This meeting is now adjourned.